Hey everybody, Daniel Rubino here, and I'm with Rod Ferguson, head of the Coalition and the whole uh, Gears of War franchise, and now we're getting ready for Gears of War 4, probably one of the biggest things to come out for this fall. So, quick question here. Gears of War has a long history, a lot of hardcore fans. How does Gears of War help people come into the franchise for the first time, though? Like, what about new gamers besides, you know? Oh, you mean Gears of War 4? I, I yeah. think Gears 4, it's, it's the beginning of a new story. So that's, you know, Gears of War 3 had a very end, much that ended that trilogy. Mm -hmm. And Gears of War 4 is the beginning of a whole new story. So you're getting a new cast of characters with JD, Kate, and Dell. Um, you're getting a new setting, you have a new threat, that, and a new story. And so, if you've never played Gears of War before, this is the time to get in, because you're not really missing out. You'll miss a little bit of fan service, like you won't know who Marcus Phoenix is, and those sorts of things, but the story itself doesn't rely on your knowledge of one, two, or three. It's, this is a whole new story. What were the challenges in, now talk about the older fans, and like that audience, what were the challenges in trying to keep them happy? Because you're you're rebooting, but at the same time, you're not rebooting, right? Right. Yeah, well, it's part of why we decided to um, basically still have the story grounded on Sarah, the planet, and because we wanted to have the ability to have those touchstones to the past. So you could have conversations with Marcus, you could find weapons that were familiar, and so that was sort of that, that idea, that fan service, to look at the fans who've been with us all along for the last decade, and then want to see some things that are familiar to them in Sarah, and what Gears of War means to have a Lancer, you know, a, a rifle. And so that was important for us to do that. But at the same time, having these fresh face, you know, 20 something kids that are able to sort of pick up the gauntlet and carry it and then have kind of new places they can go with the story. What about the humor in Games of War 4? Because we played a little bit of it today and there's some really witty moments in it that had me kind of cracking up. And I'm curious about... Not what they're expecting to hear, by the way. They're not <laughs> expecting to hear that you were laughing while playing Gears of War. <laughs> There's, but it's a great, subtle humor. And I'm curious about that and that writing process because you want the game to be serious. It's a, a great story that is being told, but at the same time, how important was it adding this sort of these little lighter moments to to break it up? Yeah, it's one of the things I found is really interesting about Gears of War as a franchise. It's one of the few kind of franchises that has that range of emotion. I, you can go from very funny to action blockbuster to making you cry, right? And so not very many IPs can really do that. Um, and so. For us, it was really about just not taking ourselves too seriously. Like, if you get caught up in the emotion of the moment, you know, it's a, games take a long time to play, and if you only are focused on, oh my God, Kate's mom has been taken, and that's Kate, all Kate talks about, and everybody just goes back, stop talking about that, we, gotta, we have to focus on Reyna and, get, and getting Kate's mom. Like, you don't want to be in that world. That's not a place you want to spend time. And so, we always looked at, there's always been a goal that, if you were done playing the game and you weren't in this situation, would you want to go have a beer with these characters? And that's really where we wanted to get to, and so I think, the use of kind of the humor just is a reflection of them being human. I think you talk to, like I used to get letters from Afghanistan from soldiers who are ser serving about they would come back to play Gears and it felt real to them in a way that the way that there was a brotherhood and the fact that they would use humor to diffuse sort of difficult situations and that's something we really wanted to bring into Gears of War and keep there, you know, moving into 4. And you brought up an interesting phrase there, the moment of almost to cry a little bit. Are we going to have some uh, serious emotional moments here in Gears of War 4? I know 3 you had a lot of people teared up. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's something to, to play the game to find out. Okay. You know, that's something that we like having that ability to, to have things that matter to the players. To find out, you know, in Gears 2, I was at, we, we were doing Comic Con and I asked how many people cried during Gears 2 and 2,000 people raised their hands, you know, and, and the same for 3. And so. It's not something that we're like always going for the tearjerker, it's just that we'd like to have stories that have meaning to the players, and so this is something, uh, it's harder on a, on, a, on a version one in the sense that we're kicking off a new story because you haven't spent a lot of time with these characters to kind of get that attached yet, but um, I think we're going to some interesting places. Let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, sorry for the pun, I know, sorry. sorry I had to do it. Let's talk about the Xbox One S. It's uh, Microsoft's latest version of their console. It's actually selling extremely well. We have it, we reviewed it. And it's one of the first consoles to have HDR gaming. And this game is one of the first games to launch with HDR. Tell us about that process, what's involved there, and what it brings to that experience. Well, I mean, it's just basically, it makes, I mean, it's, it's really hard. It's unfortunate. It's one of those things where you have a technology where you can't show it unless you have the technology, right? It's, uh, and but to see, you know, Gears of War 4 in HDR, the notion of the way that you get brighter brights and, and, and greater color differentiation and in darker darks and 
materials filter. Like when you look at the armor on JD with and without HDR, the way it, it has a different sort of uh, reflection to it, and it just feels more grounded. And, and it's it's really spectacular. So to me, it's it's been really funny as we've shown people this sort of split screen of like what it is with and without. Mm -hmm. That everybody walks away going like, oh great, now I gotta go buy an HDR TV because right, it yeah. looks so good. Yeah, we went out and bought one, and so we're very excited to try this out. Yeah, it's great. It really changes the experience, which is uh, really interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's just one of those things that it's we had. It doesn't come for free. There's work that has to be done, and one of the nice things about the Xbox One S that has that extra little bit of power that helps you get to that being able to do HDR without it compromising the, the, the frame rate of the game. Besides the HDR stuff, there's also going to be this Play Anywhere ability, and this is a great new feature. So if you're not familiar, it basically allows people to buy the game once, play it on PC as well as the Xbox. If they buy it digitally. If they buy it digitally. So how big of a deal is this for you guys? Because this is sort of a big deal, at least for gamers, but you know, for studios, we're seeing select studios basically choose this and some aren't. Yeah, it's really interesting because one of the things we've had uh, Xbox and we've had PC versions of our games before. You know, you go back to 2007, we did a Gears 1 PC, and then we did a, more recently we did an Ultimate Edition remaster on PC. But they've never been out at the same time. They've always been months afterwards. Like, we finish the console game, and then we look at the PC game and work on it afterwards. Um, and this is the first time that we'll be actually sim shipping. We'll have the Windows and the Xbox versions out at the exact same time. And it's been really exciting because it's just something that I'm really interested to see how those two, you know, platforms get to play together because beyond Xbox Play Anywhere which gives you you know you share your achievements and you share your content and you save your progress which I really like the yeah. start at home finish at work which is what I cheat it mm -hmm. when I do it um, we also are supporting cross play so you can play uh, all the cooperative modes whether you would play campaign or, or horde or the co-op versus you can play with a mixture of Windows 10 and Xbox and something we're revealing as part of this visit is we're actually also supporting private competitive play so that you can play PC versus uh, Xbox or vice versa in private with your friends so it's something that's really going to be interesting to see like when these platforms are able to combine and you have that seamlessness of that uh, being able to move from device to device and, and sort of taking away that boundary of, oh, I'm stuck on one device or another to be able to go and play it where you want to play it. Speaking of, the uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition came out. I run it on Windows 10 PC, but there were some little hiccups there in the beginning as far as the uh, ability for frame rates and resolutions. What have you guys taken away from that experience and improved and brought with Gears of War 4? Yeah, there's a lot to learn there, you know, and, and part of it is just that that's one of the complexities of, of developing for Windows. Like, my first game I ever made was a Windows game mm -hmm. uh, in Train Sim, and that was, you know, and we were actually researching that today. It's amazing. And we, and, you know, it's, uh, we had, back then we had to do software renderers and all this kind of crazy stuff because, you know, you have to, it's all about the min spec and how low can you go, right? And so it's it's interesting that with drivers now and the, and the, and the diverse, diversity of hardware and the different platforms, that that's a hard thing to do to get right. You know, it, it's one thing to build it for a console where you can go like, that's a fixed set of hardware. But when you're going to any number of PCs with any, you know, different CPUs, different GPUs and different GPU sizes in terms of memory and processing power, like, to make a game that runs on all that stuff smoothly is really hard, and that's something we really learned about how to partner better with like NVIDIA and AMD to make sure that we have a smoother experience at launch, so the drivers are ready and we're ready for you know where they are, um, and just you know Cam McRae, who's our, our technical director for our Windows 10 stuff, like he took sort of Ultimate Edition really personally, and he went in and spent a lot of time on the forums and talking with customers and understanding their requirements, and we did a lot more sort of updates to Ultimate Edition than we were expecting, just out of pure, out of Cam's pure passion for trying to deliver what the customer is looking for. So what you see now in, in our Windows 10 version of Gears 4 is Cam's passion and, and the engineering team's passion for kind of really delivering what the PC gamer is looking for. So, you know, there's like, feels like a thousand different options you can configure to find it the right way to make it run best for your machine. And finally, one last question. It's going to be a non-answer answer, answer, but I got to ask anyway. So we watched about an hour and a half of all the cutscenes put together of Gears of War. And needless to say, it's very cinematic. So any plans for a Gears of War movie that we can expect? Uh, you know, I, I uh, said before, is like, normally I would have to say, like, uh, I, I have nothing I can say um, and those sorts of things. But right now, I'm, just, I'm very excited about where we are in thinking about that. So um, there may be some things on the horizon we can talk about. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Rod Ferguson for Gears of War, coming out this holiday season, Xbox One, Windows 10. Thanks for watching, everybody.